May the words of my mouth and the meditations in each of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, for you are our rock and you are our redeemer. Amen. Merry Christmas, everyone. It is good to be here together in person and online on this particular Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve 2021. Some people have noted that it doesn't feel different enough from Christmas Eve 2020, and yet here we are again, celebrating the birth of Jesus. I came over to the church building earlier today to pray, to finish up this sermon, and to get my spirit in a Christmassy mood. There has been so much going on that I haven't had the peace and the calm to really focus on the glory of this evening. I wandered into the fellowship hall, which these days often serves as an intake room for large extended Afghan families who have recently arrived in the United States. I was greeted by a tower of boxes of diapers, reaching from the floor to the ceiling, scores of them. The Afghan friends in charge of receiving these donations apologized for taking up so much space. Somebody just dropped off a whole lot of diapers and they were just trying to figure out where to put them. And I said, please don't worry. Peace Church is happy to have these donations here. After all, even the baby Jesus needed diapers. And in that moment, the term swaddling clothes took on a whole new meaning. The very basic stuff needed at the beginning of a life, something to stay warm and dry, clean and comforted. These boxes of diapers are swaddling clothes for someone. What better use of our fellowship hall this Christmas? It is Christmas Eve, and we are drawn in once again to the basic story of the incarnation of God in Jesus, which carries with it all sorts of these details Details like swaddling clothes that I've never thought of before. And then these details make sense as we live a life and we notice the incarnation of God then and now. Some 2,000 years ago, Jesus was born, seeing a world, loving a world that needed hope and healing God refused to stay distanced from the human condition. God took on flesh and was born into that world, a world which was full of hurt and disappointment, a world which was full of sorrow and uncertainty, a world which was filled with political maneuvering and misused power. Into that world, Jesus was born. He was born in a manner that his religious forebears would never have expected or anticipated, that is probably part of why so many of them had a hard time accepting him as God's son, the Messiah. Jesus was born poor, illegitimate, whatever that means. On the wrong side of the political and religious power structure, born not into a world of comfort and security, but into hardship and uncertainty, and that shaped his whole life. He never reached the heights of worldly power. He never attained wealth or legitimacy, he was a crucified Messiah, not what you would expect. The people who heard the news that day were also not who you would expect. Shepherding was not exactly a high-class job. When the angels came, the shepherds reacted with fear, possibly because no one ever brought them good news before. They may have thought, what did we do wrong now that God would come to us? They were those kind of people who learned to expect only the worst. But on that night, there was good news aplenty even for these unexpected people. And the shepherds were exactly the right kind of people to hear it because they needed it. The savior of the world long expected, deeply longed for, was born and was born into conditions that they could understand. And everything else changed. God had done the unimaginable, taken the distance between divine power and human frailty and eliminated it through the power of love. So that when humanity is at its weakest, God's power is magnified. So that when humanity is caught up in all manner of sin, God's hope endures. 
And so we have a Christmas story that is not full of prestige or majesty, but of the most basic human things, swaddling clothes, people working the night shift, a baby, Jesus. There is only one Jesus. His entire earthly existence from birth to death to resurrection is unique in the world and unique in history. He is the only son of God, born 2,000 years ago into a particular history in a town called Bethlehem to a mom called Mary and a dad called Joseph. And yet, through the power of the resurrection and the kinship we have with Jesus in our baptism, through the energizing presence of the Holy Spirit, Jesus himself lives on, and he is born anew. It's like that first birth of Jesus ripples into the future, and every once in a while we catch the wave. This is the beautiful mystery of God's incarnation. What happened 2,000 years ago keeps happening. The power of Christ's Holy Spirit keeps on birthing Jesus into this world. I mean, if you were God, is this where you would want to be born right now? Where there are more refugees and people fleeing unlivable situations, not just from Afghanistan, but from poverty and violence and Haiti and Central and South America. And there are climate disasters in Kentucky and California with their own brand of refugee. And the coronavirus keeps mutating and we are tired and our hopes keep getting dashed, and we are grieving. My goodness, are we grieving. Jesus keeps being born into this very world, and it makes all the difference. And Jesus keeps being born where we least expect it, and perhaps where we don't even know to look. I know this because I keep meeting him. Do you keep meeting Jesus? I have met him in the chubby fingers of a child whose parent faces deportation. I have met Jesus there. I have met him in people who have been so harmed by racism and yet continue to find the energy for the struggle. I have met him in our Afghan friends working right now in the office across the hall working 80 hours a week for almost no pay, carrying their own grief. I have met him in the tech team volunteers who keep trying to make our online worship work and miraculously keep doing it. And in the musicians who bring the angel song to life and in the widow who hands me a folded check every time I go to visit. I keep meeting Jesus in ancient words, in scripture, in song, hearing God's word of hope and healing in a world of pain. And I have met him in this meal, served, yes, with tongs and at a distance, but still Christ's body and blood given and shed for you. I have met Jesus and he's rarely where I expect him to be. Jesus keeps being born into this world even now, even still, and dear church, I think there's only one thing that we have to do tonight, and that is receive it. Receive the love that is here for you. Receive the peace that is possible despite your circumstances. To be like the shepherds tuning our ears to a most unexpected melody and finding that God's glory, to our great surprise, actually breaks through the pain and the despair of this world, and that as we follow that song, we too will find Jesus in a manger. God has been born into this world, and it makes all the difference. And we hear the angel song as the song that is spoken to our hearts this evening, Fear Not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the baby wrapped 
in donated diapers and lying in an unfurnished rental, and you shall find Jesus. Merry Christmas, church. Thanks be to God. Amen.